and lesbians of America call it hate speech because we say it, we believe it's an immoral lifestyle. They call it hate speech. United Kingdom calls it hate speech. Every European Union calls it hate speech. Canada calls it hate speech. Even now in South America, certain countries are calling it hate speech. Do you know what our Creator calls it? Freedom of religion and freedom of speech. This is why when the President who reads from a teleprompter, a teleprompter, even when he goes to a third grade school, he reads from a teleprompter on a baseball field. He reads from a teleprompter. Three or four times now, when reciting the Declaration of Independence, he leaves out the part from our Creator. That we are endowed with certain unalienable rights by our Creator. Now why is he doing it? It has to be on purpose. He's reading from a teleprompter. It isn't like he just forgot the phrase that moment. Why is he doing this? Because if you want to take away my right to free speech, you have to go through the Creator, and I guarantee you He's not going to give you that right to take it away. But if over a period of time, we can convince the American people that our rights don't come from a Creator because we are monkey-bound people that came from monkeys that heading back that way, then our rights have to come from somewhere, and they must come from man. And if they come from man, they can be taken away by man. So I want to go through real quickly to show you the difference of what the liberals believe in compared to what we believe in. I have in my hand the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. This isn't their constitution. This isn't their governing document of how to run their government. This is, this, this is just a document that explains what your rights are. Our whole constitution, including the Bill of Rights when it was written, six pages long. How many pages is this? Fifty-two. I would like to read just a few things from it. The very first part of the Bill of Rights. Human dignity is inviolable. It must be respected and protected. Number two, Article 2. Everyone has a right to life. First of all, it's a lie. No one in the European community has the right to life. Not one of them have the right to life. They only came to be in because their parents believed they had the right to life. But if the parents wanted to go and commit abortion, they could end them. No one shall be condemned to the death penalty or executed. So that means I could go and kill everybody I want, take away your liberty and your right to life, and I could never be punished by my right to life being taken away from me. And you have to feed me three meals a day and keep me comfortable till I die. <clears throat> right to the integrity of the person. I mean, there's some weird stuff in here. Everyone has a right to respect for his or her first physical and mental well-being. That's just weird. I don't care how you look at it. But here's where I want to start making a point about the way we view rights by our Creator and the way the European Union views rights. And this is what the liberals are picking up on. The free and informed consent of the person concerned according to the procedures laid down by the law. They're talking about if... Um, if you're in a hospital, they can't do a procedure without your, without your um, consent. But listen to the last part of it. According to the procedures laid down by law. A right, like Mr. Allen said earlier, isn't a right if it can be taken away. So what they're saying is, we're going to give you the right to a, a consent, but only what our laws may happen to be from year to year. Everyone has a right to liberty and security of person. Article 8. We have a right to privacy. We have a right to privacy. No one in the United Kingdom or the European Union has a right to privacy. You know what they have a right to? Protection of their personal data. You understand the difference there? The government has a right to anything about you but you have a right that the government must try to protect it as best as possible. Such data must be processed fairly for specific purposes and on the basis of the consent of the person concerned or some other legitimate basis laid down by law. See, every right they give you, it can be circumvented by the law. <clears throat> Everyone has the right to the protection of the person laid out that already. Article 9, this is just weird. You have a right to get married. Whatever. It, 
but only in accordance with the laws. Article 10, freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. Uh, I'm just going to read one aspect of it here. The right to conscientious objection is recognized in accordance with the national laws governing the exercise of this right. Again, it isn't a right. Everyone has a right to freedom of expression. We just already explained how you don't have the right to freedom of expression. You don't have the right to freedom of religion, even though they say you do in here. <clears throat> Article 13, you have to love this one. I mean, a, a liberal wrote this one up. The arts and scientific research shall be free from constraint. Why in the world would you make that a right? Shouldn't that be the right of freedom of expression? There are about 57 articles in here, and each article represents a right. Almost, I would say about three quarters of them all end at the end where it states according to national laws. Article 24, though, and this is what uh, is trying to impact us here in America. We're trying to pass a, a, an amendment on this. The rights of a child. Let me tell you, my child has very few rights. My child has a right to obey me. My child has the right to go to bed at 8 o'clock at night. My child has a right to eat her broccoli. My child does not have a right to be disrespectful or to, re or to rebel against authority. My child does not have the right to believe in a religious expression she de deems right. She can have that right when she's 20, but now she's going to believe in Jesus. That's her right. In the European Union, they're saying, in all actions relating to children, whether taken by public authorities or private institutions, the child's best interest must be a primary consideration. They, the UN right now has a child... Oh, my mind's going blank. A child amendment signed by every country in the world except two, and that is the United States of America and Somalia. Now, why Somalia? I have no clue. But they are banging down the doors to make us sign that treaty. And when we sign that treaty, you will no longer have the right to raise your child that you best think. It's going to be right here. The United Nations said the exact same thing, that rights of children can supersede the rights of parents to raise them. Article 28, they have the right to collective bargaining in action. Family and professional life. Oh, it is my favorite. This is my all-time favorite. Article 41, you, sir, and ma'am, have the right to good administration from the government. <laughs> Do you love that? Now, only in a socialist country do they recognize that the government administration is so bad that they must make that a right. <laughs> and I want to finish up. The scope of guaranteed rights. Article 52. Are you ready for this? We have a Bill of Rights given to us by a creator, no political party, man, or group has the right or the legal authority to take it away from us. If they do, it will have to come by a gun, right? Amen? Article 52. Scope of guaranteed right. Any limitation, the second word there, they're already limiting your rights. On the exercise of the rights and freedoms recognized by this charter must be provided for by law. So every single right that you just said you had a right of, they have a right to change by law. So is it really a right? Why their rights come by man, our rights come from our Creator. <clears throat> in Dearborn, Michigan, which is, has the highest population of Muslims in the United States of <clears throat> America, two years ago, a group called um, 17 Apologetic, uh, Act 17 Apologetic Agelic, <laughs> I can't even say the word today, um, were passing out the Gospel of John in Arabic. They were arrested promptly, prosecuted promptly, put in jail promptly. Two days later, the state Supreme Court promptly released him and said they have a right to do what they want to do. In 2010, at the exact same festival, which is the largest festival for Arabs in the United States of America, they have video. They got smarter. And so they had people 500 feet away videotaping them. And I am telling you, there was three of them, four or five Arabs coming around, and they were just like, they weren't even saying anything. Just motion. 